short break. Uh, then after that, we will have the speakers. Uh, you can uh, ask the questions. My question is, I come from a country called Lebanon, who's like, uh, that's in debt at $100 billion. So, as I understood, the Belt and Road Initiative came to Lebanon to build an infrastructure, but we have so much debt. So, and that's what, one of the uh, biggest hurdles right now, that countries like in Africa or in the Middle East are already indebted. And their goal is to borrow money to pay the debts and buy food. And it's really hard to convince those countries to invest in infrastructure. First of all, the financing is done in uh, accordance with market economics by banks. Also, the Chinese government can also offer some grants or low interest loans to facilitate relevant construction. But of course, if there are countries that really worry about uh, over indebting itself, uh, they can uh, stay out of uh, this initiative uh, too. Because the Belt and Road Initiative is based on a joint contribution, uh, extensive consultation, and shared benefits. If this initiative cannot really bring benefits to the relevant countries or improve the economic growth of the countries, then probably the best option is not to join the Belt and Road Initiative. Thank you. So, may I just uh, answer your question that you actually need more debt to be able to pay the debt. So that's, that's the short answer, because you need to have uh, the, the question of, 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 of economy is not about money. The question is about building the real economy. And only if you build the real economy, you will be able to pay any debts. And, and of course, this is the only way to increase your uh, production and when you have a high production, the debt will be a smaller margin. So this is the only way to get out of the debt is actually to invest in real investments, and this is what uh, what uh, the Belt and Road is all about. And of course, Lebanon is uh, a great importance. It's the it's the road between Istanbul and Cairo. We, we need to have peace for for the whole Middle East with with the railway right through Lebanon. Thank you. Uh, if you go to our website, you will find uh, some material on that, on the question of the debt trap, what is uh, fact and what is fiction. So you can have, uh, we also take uh, certain cases of countries who are allegedly being put in debt trap. Uh, we have explained, uh, first of all, most of these countries like Pakistan, most African countries, almost all African countries, and Sri Lanka, their debt is 80 to 90 percent to Western countries and financial institutions uh, without any investment in infrastructure. The Chinese loans are different. They in, yeah, invested in infrastructure, they increase the productivity of those countries and allow them to repay their debt. So if there's a big difference uh, in the kinds of loans China is providing to these countries and the kinds of loans the IMF gives to countries to pay old debt, as we have seen, for example, in the case of Greece, they get loans, they pay the old debt with interest, and they get even more debt. So that's a, 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 a deadly spiral. So you can go to our website, actually. We have very good case studies there. We have the next. Uh... My name is Mike Danilovich. I have a question for His Excellency, your Ambassador of Portugal. You are one of those European countries that are attending the uh, Battle Road Initiative. My question to you, sir, is uh, what do you think is needed for Sweden to attend the Belt and Road Initiative? Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, question. Let me uh, start to say that I represent uh, Portugal, not Sweden. So I would not uh, dare uh, advising uh, Sweden on what is uh, best for Sweden 
regarding the Belt and the Road Initiative. I think that's up to the to the Swedish authorities, to the to the Swedish people. At the end of the day, uh, what I can say is that, uh, as I mentioned in uh, my my. Uh, my address, um, our uh, experience, uh, although uh, quite recently we, um, we signed uh, the Memorandum of Understanding only uh, at the end of last year, so we still, uh, implementation is just uh, beginning, but uh, what I can say is that, uh, and I also mentioned the long-standing, fruitful, historic uh, relationship uh, between Portugal and in um, and, and China, uh, first uh, through Macau. And uh, what I can say is that uh, uh, this uh, relationship which has developed over the, you know, over uh, the years, is, uh, we have had a fruitful experience. And recently, and uh, you know, going back to the former question, uh, as was said, uh, we, what we, um, we look forward in this uh, relationship is really for investment, foreign direct or Chinese direct investment, because on the real economy, uh, since we believe, we firmly believe that's, you know, that's the way to development, it's not uh, through uh, debt. Uh, of course, uh, the financial markets are there, and uh, there's no taboos uh, with uh, regard to, the, to, to also using financial tools. Uh, Sometimes they, they are uh, indeed uh, <clears throat> essential to development as well. But I would say that, uh, you know, and if, if this is, if you can take as a conclusion, uh, the focus should be on, on direct investment on the real economy. And we have had, as I said, uh, um, in the last few years, a good experience with uh, Chinese investment. As I mentioned, the uh, health sector, energy sector, uh, other sectors as well. And, um, and uh, I can say that uh, uh, we have, uh, you know, there has been a, a fruitful experience and we, we look forward to continue this fruitful relationship. Thank you. I don't know if I answered your question, but anyway. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 I'd like to add something to what the Portugal and the ambassador said. We 呃，实际上我跟他们说的，一带一路并不是是一个什么，是什么虚无缥缈的概念。一带一路就是实实在在的合作。I also have conversations with my Swedish friends in the Swedish government, uh, the business community, and media. What I often tell them is that the Belt and Road Initiative is not an abstract idea; rather, it is tangible cooperation. 什么是丝绸之路？中瑞丝绸之路实际上是瑞典开辟的。What is a Silk Road? Silk Road between China and Sweden was actually opened by the Swedish side. It was about 260 years ago when the Gothenburg vessel sailed all the way to China. In fact, it shipped uh, iron and other resources from Sweden to reach Spain first, then sell these uh, resources to get money, and then take the money to buy products like silk, porcelain, and tea from the Chinese market, and take them all the way back to Sweden. This is the Silk Road, and it was opened by the Swedish. 我们现在就是像中华铁路一带就是像加强这样的丝绸之路合作。Our proposal of the Belt and Road Initiative is exactly there to consolidate this this cooperation. 那么格德堡呃方面呃早就向往提出希望呃中国的这个现在现在格德堡跟我中国没有直接的海上航道，格德堡港务局负责人都是向往提出希望开辟这样的直接航道。我们支持。in fact, there is no direct line between China and the Gothenburg port. Now, uh, the port, Gothenburg port authorities have raised a request to me on many occasions, hoping to open a direct line connecting China and Gothenburg uh, city, which we support. Mm -hmm. 
Last September, Dalarna County in Sweden opened a China Europe freight train line connecting itself with Jiangxi province of China, transporting its timber into China. This is Belt and Road Cooperation. Also, Sweden is very strong in international development cooperation. It uh, gives 1% of its annual GDP as foreign aid to other countries. We can very well play into our own respective strength and carry out third-party market cooperation to bring benefits and prosperity to third-party countries. Just now, I was told by my friend from Norway that uh, as the climate is changing and uh, uh, some parties are considering the possibility of opening an Arctic passageway. Now, Finland, Norway, and Russia are very enthusiastic about this initiative and they are pushing this forward on the very top level of government. If such a Silk Road, an Arctic Silk Road, is indeed opened, Sweden can very well participate in it as it will bring enormous benefits to Sweden. So, in one word, Belt and Road is nothing but concrete cooperation. Thank you. I will also be very careful about giving advice to the Swedish government, uh, but I can tell you what I told the Norwegian Prime Minister uh, about the um, Norway China thing. Uh, it is basically to look at the possibilities, focus on the possibilities and find the common ground. It is like when you when you um, uh, when you met your wife or husband, you didn't look at the Differences? You looked at the possibilities. That's how it should start. <laughs> 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 uh, I uh, would like to answer uh, the, the question from Professor Danilovic about uh, the, 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 what Sweden can do. Actually, speaking about Gothenburg, Sweden has an enormous cooperation with China with the Volvo. And this is actually part of the Silk Road. As you saw from the presentation of the same uh, industrialization is the main idea of, of, of the Silk Road, to promote industrialization. And Sweden has the biggest industrial cooperation, I think, in the whole Europe with, 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 uh, with China in, in, the, in the case of Volvo. And this means that Sweden is deeply involved now with China's Belt and Road. And we have many more companies. We have also Stano sold 520 trucks to this uh, beton pump uh, company in China. So, 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 so this is a, a very, very, very big cooperation that's going on already. And the problem is that the, the political debate, the media debate, is just lagging behind. Actually, it's, it's uh, uh, they're just uh, not talking about this. I'd like to hear if you have seen any possibilities of the belt also consisting of beauty export and beauty trade with the rest of the world from China. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 丰富的物质生活的机会 The reason for me to bring out this story is that I want to illustrate how happiness and joy is built on at least some uh, uh, material, uh, material being 这是中国党和政府致力于大规模进行四十年来的七十岁人脱贫
It was, in fact, owing very much to the efforts by the Chinese government in the past 40 years to lift 714 million Chinese people out of poverty. The reason for us to build on the existing international cooperation and launch the Belt and Road Initiative is exactly to help the underdeveloped countries to further reduce their poverty and deliver a decent life to their people too. You mentioned how China can spread its beauty to other countries in the world. This is indeed a question worth over the past four decades of reform opening up, we developed ourselves with an open door. That means arts and uh, beauty from countries like the US, European countries, and Japan have entered the Chinese uh, market and they have been very popular amongst our Chinese citizens. But there are also cases where some Chinese people, while admiring the beauty from the US, from European countries and other Western countries, forgetting our own traditional beauty. In the cultural dialogue amongst civilizations of Asia, President Xi Jinping delivered a keynote speech. He proposed that Asian countries need to have more exchanges and communication amongst our civilizations. That actually gave us one mission, that is, while we admire the culture and the beauty from other countries, some other Western countries, we also need to better present our own beauty. Now there are five pillars of interconnectivity of the Belt and Road Initiative. Interpeople connectivity is one very important pillar of them. And exchanges among cultures, arts, and beauties are one very important dimension to interconnectivity between the people. As ambassador, I will faithfully execute this mission that you gave me and better present the Chinese beauty to the Swedish friends. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, in our afternoon panel, we have a number of distinguished uh, academicians and speakers who will address the question of culture also give us a picture of the uh, uh, of China from inside China, not from outside China. Uh, I have a question. You also have to thank the, the hosts here for the China Culture Center. And, and I think that this is a, a very good place to admire the Chinese beauty and the exhibitions in, in this place. So welcome back here. All right. Um, in the, I will come back. I have a question. Uh, we are we are fortunate to have uh, in our audience the Her Excellency Ambassador of Malaysia. Uh, Malaysia last year was used when there was a shift in the government, uh, and the new Prime Minister and the new government cancelled some of the projects. Now all over Europe and the United States say this is the backlash against the Belt and Road. 
This shows that the Belt and Road is a failed project. Look at all these nations now canceling, and they took Malaysia as an example. Uh, how much of that is fact and how much of that is fiction? Have you reneged on the Belt and Road? Thank you uh, for the question. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, BRICS for this invitation and for organizing this event. I mean, I learned so much uh, from the panelists today. Um, Malaysia is part of the uh, BRI, and uh, yes, there's been a lot of uh, coverage in the media about uh, the projects uh, and the BRI uh, since the new government took over last year. So now uh, we're, we're exactly about one year into the new government. And uh, we have seen that uh, our Prime Minister attending the, the, the Belt and Road uh, Forum in, uh, in, in Beijing. And uh, well, uh, Malaysia and uh, China relations have always been very good. And we've had uh, long standing, excellent relations, and it's about dialogue. So uh, um, when the new government came in, it found itself you know, heavily indebted with that uh, very notorious. Uh, one MDB case, because which put us uh, in a, a very uh, heavily indebted, and uh, and also um, these uh, major um, projects, and uh, which uh, you know uh, some of it were uh, with with China under the BRI. Um, so after one year, uh, actually the government took the decision to review these projects because uh, it was. Uh, uh, you know, adding to the, the financial burden of the country. And, uh, but uh, what we found was that, I mean, we need infrastructure. As uh, we heard during the presentation, uh, if connectivity, you know, helps uh, uh, economic development. I mean, Malaysia is, uh, for Malaysia, we have, um, you know, our connectivity, we have an air, road, transportation, and infrastructure. And that has helped our economic development. So um, uh, through negotiations, actually, one of the one of the projects was this East uh, Coast uh, Rail Link, and uh, our our government had uh, announced recently that uh, we we managed to bring down the the, the, the loans down to about one third of the actual uh, the agreed uh, uh, amount. So it shows that you know the, the these projects are important for for. Uh, countries uh, develop, you know, countries like Malaysia and other developing countries, uh, it's, a, it's important to have these projects and, uh, and we're very appreciative that you know, the spirit of openness and cooperation uh, given by the Chinese government to, 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 to have this avenue to discuss you know, to how to, you know, we have to move forward. So these projects are, are, are beneficial for us and we found a way on how to continue by uh, through negotiations. And I would uh, like to so comment on what uh, Ambassador Jokowi said about the, about the tangible benefit. Because I was in Bangladesh before I was posted here, and, uh, and I also visited Colombo. So I, I, I've seen the developments uh, through this uh, uh, PRI, in which you see um, you know, highways being built, and that has helped a lot uh, you know, for the economic impact of these countries. Thank you so much. Uh, we, we take uh, the last question here and then we make uh, the lunch break. Well, my name is Jesse from Sintra and I have a, a question to Ambassador Queen. Uh, at the forum of Omri in, in, in China, uh, President Xi ex uh, extended an invitation to Austria uh, to be a member of the, the format of 17 plus 1. That means that that would be 18 plus 1. Now, that brings, if we accept Austria, that would, be the, uh, would mean that uh, there will be 12 countries, EU countries, who will be member of that organization of that initiative. When I was reading uh, in the media and so on, I, I wonder, uh, is this initiative complementary to BRIC, or, or is, it, is it parallel to BRIC? I, I, I would like to know if they can make some comments. Uh, 
So could you, could you please briefly uh, re restate, uh, who, uh, restate the question, please? Okay. The question is that the, uh, the Chinese initi initiative of the format of Central and uh, 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 Eastern Europe, the CEE, mm -hmm, of uh, 17 plus 1, that means 17 European plus 1, the Chinese, and uh, with uh, 12 countries from the EU, I would like to know if uh, and they have a lot of several projects and so on, is this complementary to me? If these projects are just Chinese, uh, East European projects, or are these part of the Belt and Road Initiative? That's what your question is? Exactly. Yes. I would welcome the participation of Austria into the Belt and Road Cooperation. Uh, as far as I know, I am not aware of the situation where Austria is invited to join the uh, CEC Cooperation Framework. Uh, 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 the CEC cooperation is a cooperation mechanism between China and Central and Eastern European countries. Now, as far as I know, the Belt and Road cooperation between us and CEC countries are mainly bilateral. Now, I am not aware of the situation where China carries out Belt and Road cooperation with the 16 CEC countries as a collective. I think it eventually will be determined by the positions and willingness of the 16 CEC countries themselves. I think there is eventually only one standard to judge whether Belt and Road cooperation is successful. That is, uh, whether it can improve the living standards of the people in the countries along with it. I think the form of cooperation and participation in the Belt and Road cooperation should be eventually judged by this standard. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, our distinguished guests and your excellencies. Uh, we will take now a one hour lunch break, uh, but please do be back here in time. As I said, we have a very distinguished uh, panel of speakers in the afternoon. So thank you, uh, all of you, the speakers and the audience, for this session.